Okay, there's a reason I left this one to last, um, and it's because I don't understand it either. But I will try my best to explain it. Maybe don't take my word <laughs> on this one. Okay, so Felix Randall is an Italian sonnet. It has eight lines and then six lines, and the eight lines um, develop an idea, and then the six lines are more of a conclusion, but these six lines are more personal. Um, and it's the poet dealing with his role as a priest. Okay, so Felix Randall was an actual person. He was a, a blacksmith. He made horseshoes. And Hopkins was his priest who was with him in the death process. Um, and he died at 31 because he wasted away. Okay, Felix Randall the farrier. Oh, is he dead then? My duty all ended. This line establishes the subject. And in each little bit, it gives a different idea. And they're separated by punctuation. So Felix Randall the farrier establishes the subject. Oh, is he dead then? That's a rhetorical question. It's very detached and unemotional. And my duty all ended. That references his duty as a priest. Who have watched his mold of man big boned and hardy handsome. So, who have watched, that's talking about him watching Felix Randall um, waste away and deteriorate. And the highlighted sections are alliteration with very hard sounds, which emphasizes the message. So, mold is like a lump. Big boned is healthy and masculine and hardy handsome is like physically um, attracted with strong physical features. Also, that comma over there shows that his duty isn't ended yet, and he's going to explain then how. Pining, pining. So that repetition is important there because it, it's in reinforcing um, the time. Till time when reason rambled in it, and some fatal four disorders flesh there all contended. So this is talking about um, his mind deteriorating, so his reason rambled. His logic was getting mixed up, um, so he was losing his mind. Um, and there's enjambment there. Fatal four disorders flesh there. That means that his flesh, or his physical appearance, was finally um, showing his deterioration. So his sickness was coming out physically. And all contended with a question mark means he answered his own question that was in the beginning. Sickness broke him. So this is a very short sentence. And it shows the time that he had. Um, and the sickness that was fleshed out. So sickness broke him. Impatient, he cursed at first. Impatient is first, and that's emphasizing the word. And he cursed death in the beginning. At first, but mended. Mended means made whole again. So now in this stanza, he's commenting on his role as a priest and his role in helping a dying man. It starts to get more emotional and spiritual, being anointed and all. So this is linked to sacrament. I don't really know about religious things, but I wrote in my notes that he was given all the offerings um, and the priest must prepare his soul for heaven. Um, offer holy blessings so his soul can move on in peace in heaven i think and that semicolon shows uh is now going to explain this sacrament though a heavenly heart began some months earlier so his road to religion to accept his death had begun before he was on his deathbed so his religious journey was before he was on his deathbed um since I had our sweet reprieve and ransom. So our shows it's a mutual relationship. Reprieve is a break from, therefore like a break from death. He had a bit of time when he wasn't dying. And the priest and the, the dying man formed a relationship. And ransom shows you must pay ransom to um, enter the afterlife, um, to enter heaven and get salvation tended to him so this shows he was granted or given this pass to the afterlife with help from the priest 
and it links to religion. Now this line here, the tone is very heartfelt. Ah, well, God rest him all road ever he offended. So this is basically just saying, may he find peace and acceptance. And it's very affectionate. It's not overly emotional yet, but it is more emotional than the beginning. And he's basically asking God to forgive his sins. Um, once again, so he gave him time off that was sweet and lovely because he was giving him salvation. It's not dismissive, but it's the final input of the priest. It's a closure. This scene, the sick, endears them to us. Us, as in priests, priesthood. This is, means that they, the priests feel affection and an intimate relationship with those that they tend to. So this stanza is about poetry, priesthood. The poetic structure is messed with, <clears throat> which shows his confusion in this whole situation, I think. It's called sprung rhythm, and it's very personal. It basically means through what he did to the man, he was touched emotionally. My tongue had taught thee comfort, so his support offered him comfort. Touch had quenched thy tears. So that means it was a very intimate and emotional relationship. Thy tears that touched my heart. So he felt for him. Let me add. Go, Mr. Ant. He moved him. He changed him. Child. So this is not patronizing. Child of God or a helpless person. Felix. Poor Felix Randall. So this is empathy and there's more emotion in this. How far from then for thought of all thy more boisterous years. This is saying, did you think it would end like this? Um, this could be talking about Felix or the dying man. And this is when it draws the poem more about the, the priest and the poet than the original subject of Felix Randall. Boisterous years are the active years. And it's basically saying during your healthy years when you were powerful, did you think you were going to waste away? Did you think this was going to happen? When thou at the random grim forge, powerful amidst peers. So the grim forge is very hot and it's a scary, dangerous image and random shows that it's any. This section means he was respected and admired with his friends. Did's fettle for the great gray dray horse, his bright and battering saddle. So there's lots of alliteration there, um, hard consonants. So it emphasizes the the line. So fettle is to make, cut, and work with metal. Um, basically, he was cutting a big horseshoe for the, the dray horse, which is a very powerful horse. Therefore, emphasizes the power. This whole stanza, even though it's quite confusing, is basically just asking if he thought he would waste away. And the tone right now is sorrow or loss or a depletion so he could be speaking to himself in the stanza that was a very roundabout way of explaining this poem but it's the best i've got